Alright, check this lot out. Got a kindly donation from a fellow YouTuber, Brian Taylor. This is just a small percentage of it, but I thought I'd bring these in. All the rest is in the shed where it's all safely locked up where nobody can steal it. There is tons, and I mean literally tons more stuff. So let's see what we got here then. Well, I think I can start with these two without having to move the camera, so what we got here now, Brad Samuel 2005. If you're watching this video, and you probably are, do you know what this is? That's right. It's a mini disc player, and that's, yes, you heard, mini disc. Even got a couple of blank mini discs to use on it. I think I've got about three of these mini disc systems. Now, this is something that I didn't even know were released over here. This thing, let me just get this out of the way. This, as you can probably see from the shiny label, is a laser disc player. Now, at first when I saw it, I, I saw this thing, just thought it was another CD player, but it actually it is a laser disc player. Unfortunately, I don't have any laser discs to try on it, so cannot really test to see how well it works, because I'm sure some of this stuff is going to need a little bit of attention, but uh, shouldn't be anything I couldn't fix. So, over here, the next two items. Got a Philips reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. I don't know why the camera is such a weird angle here, but um, I don't know if this is mono or stereo. I think it's mono, but I don't mind that. So next up is... Nice professional piece of kit right here. A nice professional piece of gear. Digital audio tape recorder. And I know it is professional because on the back, I know it's upside down, but it's got XLR plugs. Blurry XLR plugs. Because I've got the camera on manual focus. And that brings us to the last two items here. The last two items I've bought in anyway. An SVHS video recorder, which used to also have a mini DV, but that's been taken out for some reason. Maybe it went wrong and couldn't be repaired. But this is the part I'm interested in. Oh, it doesn't seem to open. I don't know, maybe there's already a tape in there, but I'm gonna power each of these things up, see if they work, and uh, see what needs to be done. And last but not least, because I have another one of these, there are two of these. A little tiny PC. And this one appears to have Windows Vista on it. So that's gonna be a joy to use. The other one's got Windows XP on it, but uh, you know. You know, I might be able to put Windows 7 on this, or uh, might stick XP on there, like the other one has. Anyway, let's power some of this stuff up and see what works. Okay, let's see if the Philips reel to reel works. Definitely the oldest piece of equipment in this video. I've got two other reel-to-reels he gave me. One's an Akai and one's a Sony. So they're gonna get videos made. I'll just plug this in over here. Hopefully nothing will go boom or release the magic smoke. I'm sure we're gonna have a few scratchy pots that need to be need to be dealt with. Okay. Well, the level meter's lit up, and I can hear a motor running, so we know that works. All right, let's just see if we get any action. Okay, fast forward works. Rewind works. Now the spindle seems to be spinning as well, but that's probably just a friction clutch. Yeah. On a lot of reel-to-reels, that's quite normal. Let's see if the play does work. Yep. Okay, so the transport seems to be good. Let's just say, uh, yep, that seems to have pretty good. Yep, that seems to have pretty good tension there. So I'm gonna get a tape and see if it plays. I think it's got an, a built-in speaker. So uh, let's see what we get. All right, I've got a tape threaded. Let's see if it plays. I have no idea what's on this tape. So uh. It's just one I pulled out of my drawer. Let's see if we get any playback. Okay, I'm not hearing anything on that. Let's 
Something in there definitely sounds like it needs oiling, although I'm not hearing any sound unless there's a thing to turn the internal speaker on. Maybe. Well, the level meter doesn't seem to be responding, but that might just only work on recording on some of them, it does. Well, the transport works, if nothing else. Hmm, that doesn't seem to... Oh, wait, yes, it does. So, I don't hear any sound. We'll come back to that. All right, next thing to test. It looks like it's got a bit of a nasty nick there. The SVHS. Let's plug this in, see what happens. Also making some noises. Um, let's see if there's actually a tape in there. No, I think it's turned itself off. Okay, I think the tape compartment might have a little bit of a problem here. Yeah, that's going to need a little bit of attention. I can hear a fan going round. Does this have a fan at the back? Oh yes, it does. Alright, so, the, uh... There's be a little bit of a problem with the tape door there, so... I'm going to have a look inside that and see what I can do about that. Okay, so, so far we've got two repair videos coming up. So let's see the digital audio tape recorder. Let's see what this does. Now he does say that this works, so I'm gonna take his word on that. Okay, the display's lit up. So that's a good sign. This is that one that held all the XLR plugs on the back. Let's open. Okay. Okay. And put a tape in. I don't have I don't have any pre-recorded digital audio tapes, but I've got some... I've got some blank ones. These are a little bit different to the ones I thought they would be. I thought these would be, like, cassette-sized. Just see. Let's see what happens when we put it in. Okay, that all looks to be good. I'm going to do the usual tests, make sure fast-forward, rewind, play, and stuff work. Although, I don't know what's going to do with the blank tape in there. Yeah, fast forward works. Goodness. Sounds like it's going to take off. Alright, let's rewind that. Well, I'm going to say that works. Um, I will do a full test on this later on. But for now, I'm just powering things up and see if they work, you know, see what they do. Alright, how about that laser disc player? Let's see what happens. Okay, we've got a standby light. Let's see if it turns on. Yep. Turns on. It's making some noises. Let's see if the thing opens. Bloody hell. Did not expect there to be a disc in there. I was like, I will be able to test this thing after all. What is this? The Stangpangimwigam. I don't know how you pronounce that. But that's certainly something to test it with. And uh, finally, well, almost finally, the mini disc recorder. It's got one of these weird Europe plugs on it, so. Got a little adapter there, so I'll just plug that in there. Well, I had something that sounded like a relay clicking. Now, I've got at least another one of these, not this particular one, but I do have more than one mini disc now. No disc, well, that's quite understandable because I haven't put a disc in there. A bit of an adventure for me. Let's make sure that it takes the disc and does the stuff that it's supposed to do. Actually, I don't think I've put that in right. 
You can tell I'm a real expert on these things. Alright, I think it's got to go in that way. Ah, there we go. Reading table of contents. Okay, well, that seems to work so far. Let's check out that little tiny computer. Alright, now it's time to test the little Acer little PC. Now, the only trouble is, I do not have a DVI input on my TV. My monitor has a DVI input, but I don't have a DVI cable. However, I do have this cable here that has a DVI on one end and an HDMI on the other, so hopefully that will be suitable. Also, I don't have a USB keyboard or mine a PS2, but I do have a USB mouse, so let's see how well that works. Okay, I'm going to plug this in now. I believe this is the right power supply. So, plug that in. Power this up and uh, see what it does. Okay, blue lights come on. It's going to power. Oh, yes, we do have a picture on the TV. I don't know if you saw it, but there it was. So, it appears to be booting up. I'm sorry that the sound's a little bit uh, at the moment, but that's because I cannot connect my microphone up to my laptop, which is recording this, and of course I cannot use my other computer to record this because I'm using the TV to test this. But it appears to be working, it's loaded, oh that's actually loaded Windows 7. Installing device driver software. Well, it seems to work anyway. Okay then, let's see what's on this thing. You must realise, this is the first time I've ever used a laser disc player, so I don't know what it's going to do. I've just got this plugged in via the composite at the moment. Um, let's see. Spinning up. Supposed to leave this one to start. Oh, hang on, hang on. It's doing something. Well, hey, it's playing. Although there doesn't seem to be any sound. Well, I don't get into copyright for this, whatever this is. Somebody say something, do something. Okay, so let's try out the mini disc. Now I've got a pair of headphones connected up to my Real to Reels microphone input, and that is going into the laser disc. I mean, the mini disc's input. And surprisingly, these headphones don't actually sound too bad as a microphone. It's not perfect, but they sound good enough. So stick that in. I don't know if it will do a pass through of the sound or not. Of course, this is the first time I've ever used one of these, so I don't really know much about what I'm doing. Okay, let's make a mono recording, because that's what I'm going to be doing. Since the input source is mono... Okay, I don't know if let's start recording yet. Are we recording? Right, okay, I think it is recording. Well, it looks like it is doing an audio pass-through as well, because I have the outputs 
of the mini yeah of the mini disc connected to this and then that is going off to the amplifier and when I speak into the headphones I can see it moving I can see the level meter moving so test test this is a test of Cool Dude Clem on Sony mini disc and I have absolutely no idea how well this is going to come out so I'm going to stop recording now stop and see if we can play that back what I just recorded right okay I think it is recording well it looks like it is doing an audio yeah, these are picking up a little bit of buzz but it's still I have the outputs of the mini yeah the mini disc connected to this and then that is going on to the amplifier and when I speak into the headphones I can see it moving I can see the level meter moving so test test this is a test of Cool Dude Clem on Sony mini disc and I have absolutely no idea how well this is going to come out so I'm going to stop recording now let's see if we can make a recording on the digital audio tape Now what I've gone and done, because you know, as you probably know I said this uses XLR connections and nothing else, well, what I've gone and done is bodge some wires in there. I know it's not the best way to do it, but you know, for now I'll have to do it. I'll go and get some proper XLR plugs later on. And But, anyway, like I said, I bodged those wires on there, and I've connected the hot and ground connections to this little phono jack thingy with lots of phono jacks on it and then that's going off to the amplifier so let's see if I can make a recording on this now it's the same setup as with the mini disc only using this instead of the mini disc player okay I'm just gonna talk into this headphone make sure that's picking up I'm not seeing any response on the input meter but maybe if I put that into record okay okay test Alright, yeah. I think we're getting something in. Although why it's only coming through onto the left channel, I don't really know. It should be coming onto both. Okay, and we're back. I fixed the problem. There's a little bit of a dodgy connection, but I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a lot of buzz coming being picked up on these headphones and I'm using this microphone, but when I talk into the headphones, as you can see it is doing stuff let's make a recording and see how it works okay I don't know if we're in the lead part right now but I am recording hopefully on digital audio cassette using pair of headphones as a microphone that seem to be picking up a lot of buzz at the moment. Strange thing is, if I touch the headphone wire the buzz goes away and when I untouch it and buzz comes back. I think we've got a case of a background somewhere. So anyway, this is just a recording on a, um, I've forgotten what these are called now, here, digital audio cassette, using the standard settings, so let's see how well it works. Okay, so stop, rewind. Okay, I don't know if we're in the lead part right now. There we are. But I am recording, hopefully, on digital audio cassette using a pair of headphones as a microphone that seem to be picking up a lot of buzz at the moment. The strange thing is, if I touch the headphone wire, the buzz goes away. 
And when I untouch it, it buzz comes back. I think we've got a case of a background somewhere. So anyway, this is just a recording on a um I've forgotten what these are called now. Yeah, digital audio cassette using the standard settings. So let's see. Using the standard settings. I hate the way my voice does that. And there we are, that's the end of the recording. So we got about four um I'm gonna put my microphone back on now. So that's about four things work, two things that don't. So in the next video I'm going to see I'm gonna see what the deal is with the reel to reel and the uh, S video recorder and Well, like I always say, until next time, goodbye.